Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC, and today I've got a brand new product to show you. It's a new trail lid from Von Traeger with all new helmet technology. So we've got hold of one of these lids ahead of the launch and I've had time to have a really good look at it and get to grips with the new wave cell tech. So this is a new design of lid that incorporates new technology called WaveCell. It's been developed by Bontrager and Trek and it's designed to be the company's version of MIPS. So instead of a MIPS liner, you'll get similar safety standards from their WaveCell design. In a nutshell, the company has developed WaveCell technology, a collapsible cellular material which works to shear, dent and crumple in response to angled impacts. On first picking up the helmet, I thought how much it looks like the choroid system which is used in Smith's helmets. Bontrager say it's nothing to do with this material and is a completely new concept. And according to Bontrager, the choroid type material deals with impacts, but you still need a liner such as MIPS to deal with rotational impacts. And so their new product deals with both without the need to add an additional liner. To touch, the wave cell structure is more flexible than choroid and you can move and flex that lining inside the shell of the lid. Lots of companies are working, it seems at the moment, to develop new technology to keep our heads safe. And no doubt that's off the back of heightened press about the dangers of concussion and brain injuries, um, not just in the short term, but in the long term too, which are very real problems in mountain biking. In fact, the press release information I got with this lid was a journal paper evaluating the new technology. It took a fair amount of bedtime reading to assimilate that information, but basically I've come up with the following. The scientists compared a helmet with wave cell, one with MIPS and one with regular EPS foam in a vertical drop test at speeds of 4.8 meters per second and 6.2 meters a second. The data that they recorded was then used to calculate an injury risk criteria for a brain injury. And the results? Well, of course, the regular EPS helmet saw the highest injury score, whereas the MIPS lid and the wave cell lid scored better, with the wave cell helmet giving a substantially lower score than the MIPS, so better for brain injury. For example, dropping the lid onto the 45 degree angled slope at 6.2 meters a second saw the MIPS helmet reduce rotational acceleration by 22% and the wave cell lid reduced rotational acceleration by 73% compared to that EPS only helmet. There's lots of the data and results in the study, um, with researchers concluding that whilst EPS helmets are effective in preventing skull fractures, they're not so good at preventing rotational forces, which we know associated with brain injuries and concussions. The researchers said that both MIPS and the wave cell tech improved protection in reducing brain injuries when an impact is taken at an angle. There are so many things to discuss here and there will be many of you out there that are believers in MIPS and other similar technologies and there will be those of you out there that are skeptical. But here's not the time to open that can of worms. It is however worth noting that some of the scientists involved in the study I mentioned are financially linked to the concept of wave cell. Anyway, so that's the science lesson over and done with. And not getting into a big MIPS discussion, it's time to tell you about the new range of helmets. Bontrager say that the lid's ability to flex, crumple and glide means that it's 48 times more effective than a standard EPS lid. They also say that from the above research, they deduce that nearly 99 times out of 100, wave cell will prevent concussion. The fact that the helmet does change shape under impact means that if the wave cell liner is damaged, then you will need to replace the helmet. No different though, though if you're buying a, buying a new lid in the event of a big crash, as you normally would. Bontrager say they offer a crash replacement guarantee, where they'll provide a free helmet replacement if it's involved in a crash, if you're in the first year of ownership. The lead engineer of the project, Tony White, says that he feels that this is a significant step forward in the safety for all types of riders. As I mentioned earlier, there's lots of brand aiming for the same thing. So we recently looked at a new specialised ambush with their Angie safety feature and a proprietary MIPS liner that's dedicated to them for the next year. Personally, I'm all for brands working on safety, especially where the head is concerned. You only get one and it definitely pays to look after it. As for that all types of riders, there'll be four helmets on offer with Wavetail Tech. There will be two road helmets, which our sister site Road CC will be testing. There will be the Blaze mountain bike lid, which is this one here. And then there's a commuter helmet called the Charge. So this Blaze lid is aimed at trail and enduro riders and will be offered in three different sizes. So yep, you guessed it, small, medium and large. We've got a small in for test and we've weighed that at 392 grams, which is about 20 grams heavier than a Gyro Montara with MIPS in and in a small and about 10 grams heavier than a Bell Sixer, which is also in a small and a couple of my favourite test lids so far. 
So aside from the wave cell tech, it has a bird dial at the rear to adjust the cradle and a nifty magnetic fidlock buckle on the chin. So that's similar to ones you might have seen on the Frox Pro Frame lids. It also features a magnetic mount system compatible with the brand's lights and of course GoPros. Other features are the three position adjustable peak, a ledge for goggle strap placement at the rear and fully adjustable chin straps. The lid will also come in different colours other than this Miami green. You can get it in orange, grey, black and purple. And those dark colour lids get grey wave cell liners rather than the green one that you see here. In the box, there's a spare set of pads with a silicone strip on the forehead, meaning you can choose from the regular pads inside the helmet um, to the ones with the silicone strip, which aims to channel the sweat away from the eyes. The other news that's hard to avoid is that the helmet will cost $299 US dollars, which Google tells me is 229 quid. So you can expect this lid to sit at the upper end of the price bracket, although we don't have UK pricing yet. For reference, a Smith Forefront 2 with MIPS is 175 quid, a Troy Lee A2 is 140, and then something like that, a Bell Super DH is 245, or a Bell Super 3R is 200. Um, so the Bontrager Blaze is getting on for being as expensive as a convertible or a full face enduro lid. Evaluating the price of helmets where a large emphasis is placed on prevention of brain injuries is a difficult one, as is testing the helmet with impacts in mind. If it does its job, then the price is irrelevant in my mind, but I really don't want to experience a crash big enough to fully test this feature. As with all our test helmets on Offer OTC, I'll be reviewing this helmet in terms of its fit, comfort, weight, aesthetics and practical functions and features, and hopefully not having a massive crash. So, you can check back soon for a review on off.road.cc and for now, I'm off for a ride. Thanks so much for watching.